Hey, Tan here. Hi, I'm Lori. Um, Dale had asked me to uh, participate in this presentation because she did feel that self-awareness is extremely important to all of these things. And what we want to show by the end of tonight is, let me see if I can go back to that, is, uh, is how all of these things really will fall in alignment when you truly do have a healthy sense of self-awareness. When you know who you are, you know what your strengths are, you know what turns you on, you know what gets you out of bed at night, you know what your unique brilliance is. How many here know what your unique brilliance is? Raise your hand, your unique brilliance. What really makes you shine in the world? What makes you want to get up and get out of bed? What your values are. When you know that, you become a whole person and all of these things fall in line. You'll have the motivation you need. You'll be very conscientious of yourself, of, of those around you, and of what's before you. Influence. When you know yourself, you're authentic. You, you have integrity. People trust you. And when that happens, you're able to positively influence those around you much more easily. Emotional resilience. When you have self-awareness, when you know everything about yourself, you're able to manage yourself and your emotions much more better. Much more better. better. <laughs> much better. <laughs> and what we do know is that stress levels are tied directly to emotions, emotional resilience. So when you're more in a line, your stress levels will go way down. How many here would love stress levels to go way down? I'm sure most of us. Managing your resources. I promise you that when you know more about yourself, you have time to be aware of others around you instead of being so self-focused. So you'll be able to manage your resources much better. And your communication. Again, when everything is in, in line, you're authentic, your integrity, your communication just flows. People get you. They understand what you want. They understand where you're coming from. So self-awareness truly is that important. The quest for self is about saying yes to your whole self. It's not about selecting what parts of yourself you think should show up in different situations. It's really about embracing all of who you are every time, no matter what. Because all of us here are important. We all have our own strengths. We all have our own unique brilliance. We all have something to contribute here. And when we're able to embrace that, we are more alive. We are more effective in every case because we're a whole person. We're able to really play with the unique brilliance and bring that out and let it shine. We step into our full potential. And when we do all of these things, we can empower others. And I think that that's what we're all about, is really getting outside of ourselves because we're so comfortable with who we are, we don't have to be so self-focused anymore. We can now step outside of that and reach out and pull others up with us. So self-awareness is so important. It is time to step into your personal power. Unfortunately, most people don't take the time or do the work of uncovering who they were put on this earth to be. And each of us does have something very uniquely special about us. When that happens, we're not in alignment. We go through life like we're at the carnival in a hall of mirrors. All of these mirrors are a reflection of me, but they're all distorted. So in one situation, you're, you're one person. In another situation, you show up as someone else. All different pieces. When that happens, we cannot be in alignment. We're not, we, we're not in integrity with ourselves and who we really are. So we're stressed. We have tunnel vision. All we want to do is get through the day, get through the week, get through the project or whatever it is before us, just get through it so that I can get home and relax. When that happens, as you can see in this picture, I just love this picture because there is so much possibility and opportunity that exists around us. But if we are so focused and we have this television because we're all stressed and tensed out, 
we don't have the opportunity to take advantage of the potential that's all around us. So, step into your true power. Now is the time, there is no better time to step into your power. When that happens, your vision opens wide up. You're truly in alignment. You think more creatively. You look at the world with much more curiosity. You're much more open to feedback from team members and others around you. And that makes you just so much more powerful. You make better decisions, better choices, and you're much more effective. So one of the assessment tools that I use is the archetypes. Um, the archetypes is, as Dale said, it's, it's an ancient, and I'm sure many of you have heard of, of archetypes, it's, it's uh, ancient patterns of personality. And as it's described, it's the contents of the collective unconscious. And what we know about the unconscious is our unconscious mind it is what drives every perception and every, action, every uh, behavior that we do. It's how we view the world through our own filters. And it's how we behave in the world. So our unconscious mind, there's a lot of stuff stored in there. Some of it, we don't even know what's in there. But that's not always a good thing. <laughs> um, but Carl Jung found, the, he, Carl Jung studied the unconscious mind, and he found that these patterns, these archetypal patterns were so important that he truly did make it his life study. So what are these archetypes, and why are they important to us? What, there are 12 primary archetypes, and you've all got a, a sheet on your, on your tables. 12 primary archetypes that do show up in every single one of us. Now there's actually hundreds of archetypes. If you look it up, you can find hundreds of different archetypes, but there's 12 primary. These 12 primary archetypes do show up in every single one of us. And we tend to resonate or um, identify more closely with one, or two of these archetypes. And what that means is that we see the world and we behave in the world much of in alignment with the patterns of what these archetypes are. Dale mentioned the research that we did with other project managers around the world and that we did get responses from 11 countries. We found it really interesting because of these project managers 31% of them responded that they identified most closely with the archetype of the humanitarian. And 22% said that they identified most closely with the archetype of the teacher. So what does that mean and how can these people use this information? I just want to give you a little bit on how they can use this. We'll take the humanitarian as an example. What we know about the humanitarian is that it is in a natural position of power. The humanitarian is the unsung hero. In the middle there, one of the strengths of the humanitarian is bringing people together. How many in this room feel that bringing people together is an important part of your job? Can I see hands? Yeah. The humanitarian likes to fit in and belong. The humanitarian likes to be relied upon. So again, can I see a show of hands? How many of you in this room feel that you can actually relate to this archetype of the humanitarian? That's pretty much in line with our, with our research, actually. We found it so interesting that in one industry, so many came back with, uh, resonating so strongly with the humanitarian. So it could get in your way of making the changes that you just wrote down that you'd like to see different. Dale took the uh, assessment, and uh, she is an alchemist. And it says that uh, these, it, these actually are the challenges of the archetypes. What you have in front of you are some of the traits or characteristics of the archetypes. But these are some of the things that could challenge you or be a risk to you achieving what's actually on your papers that you just wrote down. According to this, Dale, lack of focus may be an issue for you. Do you find that? Yeah, definitely lack of focus is a, a risk for me meeting my goals. My husband sitting in the back, he can attest to that. 
Yeah, he says, stay focused, Dale. <laughs> and he's that quality, left-handed quality engineer guy, so he's all over focus. So that's what we want to be aware of, is the challenges that we, that, or the, the challenges that we could experience that would get in our way. As Dale said earlier, get the hell out of your own way. These are the things that are going to stop you. Research says that 84% of us will not achieve our New Year's resolutions. And we have to look at that. I found that really interesting. Why is that? And it all comes down to us. We do have the power to achieve whatever it is that we want to achieve. But it's these things that are natural to us that we're not even aware of that will get in our way, they'll slow us down, or they'll stop us and turn us around and send us right back to where we were in 2009. 